Good evening and thank you for joining me this Friday remotely from my home in Oregon, Ohio. While we can't be in the studio currently, TV2 is still dedicated to bringing you today's top headlines. Welcome to TV2 Online. The KSU community will gather to commemorate the 51st anniversary of May 4th, 1970 the day the Ohio National Guard fired on students during an anti-war protest, killing four and wounding nine. The commemorations being the second year in a row, they are being held virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic. TV2 reporter Bailey Schweitzer has more on the story. May 4th commemoration is very important to the Kent State community, but after this year, events will begin to look different because the commemoration is missing the man who started it all. Alan Canfora was wounded from the Ohio National Guard on May 4th in 1970. He was the driving force behind the university's remembrance of the event and passed away last December. Losing Alan is such a, a blow. He was an activist. The commemoration that it's lasted this long is because of Alan. The Kent community reeled from Canfora's passing and they realized that those who lived through that experience firsthand won't be around forever. The people who who lived through May 4 are getting older. These people that are just wellsprings of information, of firsthand knowledge, um, they're, they're going to stop being able to come to these things and eventually, you know, they, they won't be here anymore. Because of this, May 4th will be re-envisioned and focused on the parallels between student activism today and the 1970s. We had a lot of focus on memorialization, but I think now as we kind of shift into these times where we're, students are really active again, kind of like they were in, in the 70s. Students want change, students want justice. Many say that showcasing student activism will be the best way to memorialize May 4th moving forward. Showcasing Kent State's long history of student activism and just student activism in general, and that will all tie back to Allen. Many also say not only showcasing student activism, but also fostering it is the best way to commemorate May 4th and to remember Alan Canfora. Alan's spirit was about like justice. To embody that once again is the best way um, to continue Alan's legacy. This is the plan for next year's May 4th commemoration and those following. For this year, events begin today and will end at midnight on the 4th with a virtual candlelight vigil. Signing off for the last time this semester, I am Bailey Schweitzer for TV2 News. Now, back to Alex. Thanks, Bailey. Kent State is putting on a variety of virtual events this year. These include a surplus of presentations, videos, and discussions. Some highlights include diversity discussions, a presentation on re-envisioning the May 4th task force, and a video premiere focusing on the nine wounded students. And while the end of the semester is near, finals week is also approaching. Spring classes will end May 4th, and exams will take place from the 6th through the 12th. KSU President Todd Dykin sent in an email yesterday that Kent State graduated nearly 9,000 students in 2020, and the same amount, if not more, is expected in 2021, including 5,000 students this May. While the weather has been a bit chilly and rainy here in Oregon, I'm going to pass it over to our weather anchor, Odin Amateur Gorby, to see what we're dealing with in Kent. Hello, all Forge County. I'm TV2 weather anchor, Odin Amador Gorby, with your Friday forecast. Uh, starting with the currently in Kent, we are under a freeze warning for, um, until Saturday at 8 a.m. tomorrow due to cold temperatures. Uh, currently in Kent right now, we are dealing with 50 degrees and probably cloudy skies across our area. Um... As we head into your hour by hour, we will be dealing with sunny skies towards 7 o'clock. Midnight will be clear. Towards 7 a.m. will be sunny. And if we look at your radar right now, we are under that freeze warning until tomorrow at um, 8 a.m. There is a river flood warning for Trumbull County until 11 a.m. And a small craft advisory in effect and until tomorrow at 2 a.m. Um, right now, it's very clear out there right now. 
Um, towards your tonight's forecast, we will be dealing with uh, partly cloudy skies, um, with temps in the 30s, um, and then your seven-day outlook. It looks like it's going to be a really nice week until Monday when we'll be, we'll be dealing with some rain showers, and then towards Tuesday we will have a chance for thunderstorms, typical for this time of year. Um, we'll continue with rain with Wednesday, and then towards your Thursday through Saturday, partly cloudy skies. I hope you all have a great day out there and stay safe, Porridge County. Election season is ramping up again in Ohio as the state begins nearly four weeks of early voting. The Franklin County Board of Elections opened its early voting center Tuesday morning. Aaron Sellers, the public information officer, said smaller crowds are expected and COVID-19 safety measures will be taken. 100 million Americans are now fully vaccinated, White House Coronavirus Response Director Jeff Zients announced today. According to the CDC, United States has administered approximately 237 million shots of the three COVID-19 vaccinations as of this morning. White House officials say they have three main goals for the next 100 days. Increasing accessibility, combating misinformation, and assisting those without the resources to get vaccinated. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Welcome to Friday Night Sports. My name is Ian Herman. We will begin tonight with a preview of the Kent State football spring game. The Kent State football team is finishing up their spring practices with their annual spring game tomorrow at 9.15 a.m. The game will not be open to the public. However, fans can follow along on all social media platforms as well as the radio broadcast will be on BoxCast. The Flashes are returning nine starters on offense and eight on defense, which should provide a spark and help them get back into another bowl game. Their first official game is September 4th at Texas A&M. The Kent State men's golf team looks to snag their 27th MAC title this weekend and extend their lead with the most titles of all time. The Flashes are currently ranked 42nd in Golf Stats national ranking, with the next closest MAC team, Toledo, ranked at 134. They enter this weekend with five top five finishes and a tournament win during the regular season. The Indians travel to Chicago to take on the White Sox in the first of a three-game series and their first of ten games in a row. Cy Young winner Shane Bieber will be on the mound for the Indians and always gives them a chance to win. He will be faced by former Cy Young winner Dallas Keuchel. The Indians are losing the season series to the Sox 2-3 and losing by a combined score of 22-14. The Tribe is currently two and a half games behind the Sox and wins this weekend would help bring them back to the top of the Central. That is all I have for sports for today. My name is Ian Herman. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. You will soon have the chance to buy a ticket to outer space. Blue Origin wants to send paying customers on brief joy rides to the edge of space. Passengers will get to ride 60 miles above Earth and spend several minutes in weightlessness before the capsule parachutes back to Earth. Blue Origin is a space tourism venture funded by Jeff Bezos, who is cashing in a billion dollars a year in Amazon stock to pay for it. Blue Origin's website says more details are coming on May 5th. And that will wrap up this Friday evening and final edition of TV2 Online. For the latest breaking headlines, you can follow us on social media at Kent Wired. Signing off for the last time this semester, I'm Alexandria Manthe. Have a great night, Portage County.